Coach, I want to talk talk here for a second, okay? Because uh, we're getting real. This is we're going to do another. Uh, I'm going to do Scott Tacular three coming up next week. Uh, Scott Tastic, yes. Scott's on the rocks, whatever we're going to call it. Scott's on the rocks. What about that'll be next week? We'll be doing a, our third episode from from Scott's uh, comic relief. Uh, for the past couple of weeks. Now, I didn't realize I had timed it this way, but I read the graphic novel Death of the Family, which is basically where the Joker takes out every supporting character in Batman, including Batman, and then serves Batman all their faces on top of a goulash or something. Oh, am I... Oh, by the way, spoilers. But, uh... <laughs> They get better. But anyway, uh -huh. Uh -huh. they get better. So anyway, I compared that. This was part of the New 52 thing. I mean, this story is 10 years old, maybe? Somewhere between 5 and 10 years old. This is part of the DC's New 52. And DC, just this past week, came out with the three Jokers. Yes. Jeff Johns. It's is, is selling is big right now. I, I managed to get a copy. Poor old Scott. He, he was like, I got... I uh, only got two copies left. I don't know how he managed to keep two copies. But they both had Batman because everybody wanted the Joker ones. I don't give a crap what it's got on the cover as long as it's presentable and the story inside is the same. So I got the Batman one. And compare now remember, Jeff Johns is one of those guys that I absolutely adore. I'll read I'll read a matchbook cover if he writes it, right? So he uh Comparing the three Jokers to Death of the Family. Now, understand, Death of the Family is a book about yay thick. Yeah, it's got a couple hundred pages to it. I got it out there. Um, I might let you look at it if you want. The uh, Now, the three Jokers is a book about yay thick. Okay? The Jeff Johns, who's the artist on that? Faybog? Something Faybog. The Jeff Johns book, The Three Jokers, has, this is only the first issue now, has more character development, more plot development, more coherent plot development, better oh. handling of the characters, the interrelationship between the characters, the interrelationship with the, with the antagonist, no less, and with the protagonist, Batman. All of this stuff, superior in every way. You get more of it in this one little first issue of the Three Jokers than you got in the 300 pages of Death of the Family. Damn. Indeed. So that's why it's selling out so good. <laughs> because Jeff Johns knows how to tell a freaking story. Now, he doesn't get it right every single time, but you know what? If you're swinging for the fences, you're going to miss a few, a few pitches, but that's okay. Because I gotta admit, the three Jokers, he knocked that one out of the park. I can't wait for the well, second issue. Well, now I should tell you that I didn't know nothing about it. That's why I didn't written it down. But when I was looking at some of the news articles, that popped up many times, saying that that uh, the three Jokers are selling out fast. That is a spectacular story. Have you had a chance to read it? I have not. I didn't know nothing I've, really about it. So. I've, I've got issue number one. I will let you use it. as I'll let you read it as long as you promise not to get chocolate all over the day I'm covered. But anywho. Really? I, the idea, the concept is spectacular. I love the fact that they're, they're actually taking chances with these characters still after all the crap they took over the new 52. Okay, now understand there's more crap storm to come. Have you heard about Batwing? Yeah, how those issues are now selling for like a thousand dollars a piece in the back market now because Batwing is going to become the new Batman, supposedly. We'll see. That's that's what the speculators are saying, but they're taking chances so. How do you get the Joker going from being the cackling guy who puts smiles on fish to being the guy who puts a bullet into Barbara Gordon's spine to the guy who actually beats Jason Todd to death with a crowbar 
smashing his skull in. Yeah. How do you get? How do you reconcile these three guys? And the Joker who actually goes in and keeps raising hell with all the organized crime guys. Okay, how do you reconcile all these? It's almost like there's three different guys. Oh my God, there's three different guys. That's Jeff John's <laughs> epiphany. There's three different guys. I mean, this is pulling from stories going all the way back to like the so hold on, hold the on. 1966 camp version. The books that were published back then. So there's always been speculation that there's been more than one Joker, right. but you're saying that there's literally just three guys all together that are working together. Not just like, oh, this one died and then somebody else took the right. Uh, it's a franchise. I mean, why didn't you hold on, hold on. <laughs> he he says there's right there in the book. If you read Jeff John's script in the book. He points out there's three of them. There's there's a comedian, there's a clown, and there's a criminal. Okay, the comedian is the guy who puts the smile on the faces and stuff. Yeah. The clown is the guy that creeps people out and does the scary stuff. The criminal is the one who organizes shit. He's the Joker who has all his crap together. What about the serial so, killer one? The serial killer is the clown. That's the one you got to oh. be afraid of. The, the comedian is the one, he's the performance artist. He's the one who does these grandiose gestures and get go out with a smile and all this other stuff. The clown is the killer. And the criminal is the one, get this, who started the franchise. There's, remember Batman Incorporated? Remember that shit? Went worldwide, spawned... Bruce Wayne subterfuge and stuff sponsoring Batman all over the world, right? Yeah. Batman Incorporated. And the Joker beat him to it, apparently. He's been doing it for decades. And whenever a Joker dies, remember, Jokers die. They do die. They fall off the cliffs, they get dunked into acid, <laughs> all this stuff. Well, he goes out and recruits another one. He goes out and finds somebody who fits the, the, pat, the psychological profile he needs to fulfill a purpose. He needs a... Remember, he's the criminal. And this guy looks... If you Once you see this book, he's going to look like he's it's almost 80 or 90 years old. <laughs> but he still colors his hair and stuff, apparently. But the... Uh, remember, Batman just celebrated what anniversary? This is, uh, what, 75th 80, or 80th? 80th. 80th, 80th anniversary. This Joker looks like he's 80. So, whenever the one of the clowns or one of the comedians gets killed off, he recruits another one to take his place. And it's going to come, I think it's going to come out, they actually do the plastic surgery, they do the the whole treatment, they've got it to, I bet it comes down to a science. Jeff John's going to blow people away if, if this is what I think it is. And I do have all the confidence in the world in it. This yeah. looks like the the criminal Joker is the one who's in it for the money. And that's the scariest part of all, because all this crap the Joker does, the criminal one is there placing the bets in the right places on Wall Street to clean up. <laughs> okay, here's a wild idea. Okay. Yes. Well there is here. What if? Yes. Since he's so old. Yeah. Okay. What if the mastermind the criminal Joker. Mm -hmm. Well, that turns out to be Alfred. <laughs> Just say. I'll or say Commissioner that, Gordon. I'll say this too. I'll say this too. Okay, now we already know. Everybody knows Barbara Gordon's Batgirl. Yeah. No, nope, most people don't realize there's a a younger son. James has a younger son who is a psychopath. And a, 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 apparently a, a rather decent criminal at it, too. Mm. Just think. Hold on. I've got three minds on this. Okay? The criminal is 80 years old. Criminal Joker is 80. We'll call him Emperor Joker, just for the fun of it. Okay? <laughs> Emperor Joker. He's 80. He knows he's, he's going to die at some point. These other two guys, they're in it for the jokes. They're in it for the they're in for the lulls, okay? Yeah. He's the the Emperor Joker needs a successor. 
He needs somebody who is as clever as he is and as devious as he is and is as cold-blooded in order to keep the, the joke going, keep the franchise going. So, I can think of three people who will fit that. James Gordon Jr., Commissioner Gordon's son, which is probably the obvious plant, so mm, I haven't seen enough of him to determine whether he could really fit. They could probably mold him into it. That would be the easy way out. Number two, Jason Todd, the Red Hood. Yeah. So he's already taken over one of the old Joker personalities. But what if Emperor Joker is able to take Jason Todd aside and say, this is the guy who killed you, not me. I want you to take over what I what I do and keep Batman on the straight and narrow. And Jason Todd is just psychotic enough to do it. But there's one more, and I if he if Jeff Johns does this, I if, forget it. I'll I'll just have to retire and just be his bitch from now on. Who what what? Damian Wayne. The, so Robin the entire time. Batman's biological son becomes the new Emperor Joker. Look, have you read some of the books that Damian Wayne is in? No. Okay, you need to read Damian Wayne. Okay, you go go read some old Teen Titans and stuff that he's in. The one that the Damian Wayne uh, Robin. He is a a nasty little piece of fudge. Okay. <laughs> Arrogant. He's been and remember he's been raised by Ra's al Ghul's little girl. Okay, his his daughter Talia al Ghul is his mother. Okay. So, Damian Wayne is the biological son of Bruce Batman Wayne and Talia Al Ghul. So, he was raised the first eight years of his life with the League of Assassins. And his granddaddy, Ra's Al Ghul. So, yeah, he's got the sneer down, he's got the condescending attitude, the only weakness he has is Alfred. He absolutely adores Alfred because Alfred's the one who keeps putting up this crap and then putting him in his place when he needs it. So he actually, he respects his dad, but he respects Alfred even more. Because Alfred does not put up with none of it. But, huh. <clears throat> Damian Wayne would be a superb new Joker. To become the Emperor Joker and continue to perpetuate the three Jokers. And the best part is, you only need three, because each one has its own area of expertise of just wrecking havoc, wreaking havoc on everything. Uh, that sounds so, interesting. So I'm, I'm betting we're going to see one of those three step into the I mean, Emperor's place. Because, I'm not going to spoil it, but... Let's just say by the end of the first issue, Jason Todd has taken his first steps. See, I, I always thought, like... So the three Jokers, buy it. Damn it, it's seven bucks. It'll be the best seven bucks you've spent if you're any kind of comic fan or ever been a comic fan at all. Go ahead. Um, I always thought that... I mean, that's a cool concept. I never thought of it like that. I always thought that it would be cool to... You, have you seen the movie called Split? I've heard of it. I haven't had a chance to... Well, this it. guy has like 25 or some odd different personalities in mm -hmm. it. And each one has its own yeah, super Yeah, I always right? thought, wouldn't that be cool for a Joker story? Mm -hmm. You know? Like, he can like, walk among you and not know, but when he gets to that personality, he doesn't need surgery. It just, like, literally forms and goes into <laughs> this madness. Mm -hmm. That's an just... awesome idea. But can you execute it well? That's the thing. I think it can be by the right people. Because I've seen it done in some ways. Now, you've paid more attention to the Doom Patrol show than I have. Okay, this Now, we're, it seems like we're going off in different tangents. Yeah, we are. This is what we do. Doom Patrol. <laughs> the Doom Patrol. Have they gotten to Calamity Jane yet? Calamity Jane. Uh, I think that was, was her she? name. Which one was she? Calamity Jane was the one who had multiple personalities, and each one had their own superpower. Oh, yeah. She predated Split by about 15 years. Yeah. So she's she's turned up. Yeah. And it's one of those things, again, Doom Patrol is almost like a surreal superhero type of thing. Have you watched any of Doom? I have. I, I think I watched the first few episodes and gave up on it. 
Well, that was the whole. That was that one girl's whole thing. Like she had. That's like, what I thought. But, because but it's been throughout, a while since I've seen it. Throughout the first series and throughout the second series, it a lot of it deals with inside her head. So you get to meet the different characters, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, instead of doing it a lazy way and having her play every character, everyone has a different. Like there's a African American woman. There's an Indian woman. There's a one dressed all in black and. One that like different bald actresses, in other words. Yeah, planned. just like yes. a bunch of different, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, and and again, psychological <laughs> development and stuff, and that's one of those things. It requires talent to pull off, and that's something that's in short supply apparently, because Jeff Johns pulled it off the plum with three Jokers. Yeah, I brought it back, and. Oh God! Grant Morrison was the one responsible for the Doom Patrol you're seeing. Uh, it's largely based on his Dadaist humor, Man. and it Patrol. is nobody. Nobody can write like Grant Morrison can. The only, the main thing I'm waiting for, and the only guy who could possibly go beyond what Grant Morrison did with Doom Patrol would be Neil Gaiman with the Sandman series. Don't trust China, China is asshole! Yeah!